Parry Talks. This is probably episode two or one, depending on how I roll this out. It's July. For context, I'm recording these a bit early and then I'm going to put them out a bit later. Today I've got, I don't know, I don't want to say the word influencer, <laughs> but I think it's like, if you take away the negative connotation of what influencer means, I feel like that's what you are for Sydney dance music oh. or electronic music, like our club scene. And it's the wonderful Caitlin Medcalf, Purple Sneakers owner. Thank you. Um, Yay. <laughs> Purple Sneakers DJ. Yep. Freelance writer. Yep. What else do you do? Uh, I DJ as well outside of that as mm-hmm. myself. Um, I work in a cafe as well. I feel like every creative has a hospital job or some other kind of side hustle. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I make music too. But so, Is that new? That's... Oh, I've been doing it for like two years now, but I don't have anything to show for it yet. So TBA. Do you like making music? I really do, yeah. I really like it. I wish I had more time to put into it. Have you been thinking about that for a long time, making music? Or is that a new thing, having been in and around music for so long? I've definitely always thought about it. I think there's like, I'm sure you know the feeling, but like there's always that weird thing when you're writing about music. I've always had this really weird, uh, what's the word for it? It's like kind of this fraud feeling Mm. of being like oh i'm a i'm creative in the sense that i'm writing about things that are creative but i'm not creative because i'm not actually making my own yeah kind of things i always find that as well it's like you listen to an artist do an interview and you know that they're trashing the interviewer it's like but then that's what my motivation is it's like i want to be a journalist yeah that peep that artist aren't afraid to talk to because i'm genuine about it yeah so that's sort of my that's my like motivating thing anyway yeah definitely awesome so where did it all begin where did like the love for music start for you do you feel it's really interesting I think like a lot of people you speak to in the industry and they grew up around music and like their parents were really into music but mine kind of just you know pretty average they just listened to like Australian rock Aussie pop that kind of thing yeah but I think it all started I used to have a neighbor who lived next door to me she was three years older than me so when I was in year six she was in year nine and she had an older sister who worked for EMI music back when EMI wasn't a conglomerate kind of thing and she used to get all these uh, sample CDs from artists that she'd be working with. And yeah, she used to, once my neighbor was done with them, she'd kind of burn them on her iTunes and then she'd give them to me. And then I'd listen to them. So like uh, that era, I kind of got into like the presets, Vanshee, our gorillas as well. Mm. Like that was a lot of the records that were given to me. So I think that was kind of when I realized, oh, there's more to just music than what's on the radio. Yeah. And yeah. I don't want to make you feel old. <laughs> But I feel like it's crazy how different generations we grow up with such different music and it's influenced those like early listening patterns are probably so important for people like me as well. Where, yeah, music was in my family, but it wasn't like a, my dad played guitar, my uncle was in this big jazz band at school. Um, where it's like those early pop listening patterns are so influential. Because like you said, those bands have like, for me, it was like, what, a certain amount of years later. Yeah. And we were listening, like the pop music was like EDM is shit. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the pop music like, is so different. Yeah, and like, yeah. now I said this last time as well, kids are going to grow up with like an appreciation for like 808s and like high hats and <laughs> shit, like Old Town Road, like. Yeah, exactly. Like that's like, so when this generation of kids are going to be like so hip hop influence and then that was more like early rock influence and then I was like EDM influence. Definitely. So I feel like. Yeah, I definitely grew up in like the indie era. Yeah. Like the indie rock, indie dance. That was a really big part of my upbringing, like Arctic Monkeys, The Strokes, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, it's cool. funny. I always started out with bands, but then kind of segued later on. That was a perfect segue. Yeah. <laughs> How did, so where does dance music come from for you? It's really funny. I, I always had an appreciation for dance music. Like, I always loved it, but it wasn't my thing. Like, I think I originally started writing about music because I love bands and I love indie music. And I think being under 18 was when I got into all of that. And I was really passionate about, you know, all ages gigs. And there's not a lot of all ages dance music events that particularly at the time that weren't like hard style. So I think my exposure to dance music really kind of started when I turned 18 and I could actually start going out. Yeah, I feel I found that's like exactly the same for me. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but this is how I, I see my listening in like two ways. I've got like the like the hip hop like the bars like oh look at how he's used that syllable to rhyme with this syllable and I've got like my ignorant music where it's like let's dance let's get <laughs> weird to it whatever and like initially when I was like younger it was like I still had the hip hop stuff but it was more the ignorant hip hop stuff that filled this void yep. but when I started going out it was like oh I want house music with like soul yep. to fill that void for me so I found like like and you probably speak to a lot of people as well I feel like that's such a 
turn 18, it's like, oh, let's go out, dance music. Yeah, because, definitely. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's it's so weird how that kind of opened up a whole new world. Like, mm. just being able to legally be in a space. Do you find... <laughs> I'm so... I have I might have a controversial opinion on the 18 plus all ages thing. Yep, go for like, it. Like, do you... Well, I think... When I turned 18... When, when I was before I was 18, I was like... Oh... Oh, we, oh, I'm missing out on all these artists. Like, why don't they just let me in? But then, turning 18 and going out, it's like, I get it. Because, like, <laughs> venues don't want to get fucked over. Yeah. And, like, underage drinking is such a big problem in Australia as well. Oh, definitely. So, all that thing. So, I sort of understand it. But yeah. I feel that there is still... Like, especially under 18 shows, there's definitely a massive gap there. Do you think that's a big issue for our scene? I think yes and no. I think accessibility is always a problem in music. Like, it's, I'm glad that it's being talked about a lot more, not just like, you know, people being allowed into gigs, but like how people can actually access those spaces. And I think, yeah, that comes hand in hand with that discussion around accessibility. So I yeah. think, yeah, I, I am all for like younger people being able to, you know, be part of the culture and ingest the culture. But mm. at the same time, I think like there's, particularly with electronic music, there's a lot of like, kind of illicit things yeah, happening around it that. yeah and i think that i think under if i was going to those under 18 i wouldn't have been ready to experience that no. but yeah even from a cultural point of view like a lot of things happen at these gigs that yeah you sort of have to ease into it definitely Type for me anyway so i say that though but i remember i went to a sh- an under 18 show with some of my friends it was oh, i forgot to put it on but it was kilter uv boy east someone else at the lair and yeah. i was like it's like it's one for us and then we like went we had the awesome time it's like i still see both sides because like i remember like i remember used to like cry like um skepta played emerald theater but it got cancelled then when the tickets came out for that i was like crying in bed like i love skepta so much like let me come so i see both sides yeah definitely i think i think they should exist i don't know if they should coexist because i think I definitely, as a 16, 17 year old, would not have been mature enough to navigate these spaces, you know, being over 18. But I think, yeah, there is something to be said for creating spaces for people under 18. They do need that. For sure. So, got a bit sidetracked there. So, fell in love with music. Then how did you start writing? When did that begin? I I vividly remember in year 10, we had this really weird careers person come in externally and sit us all down and they were like all right so you're coming into senior school and you've all got to kind of start thinking about your subjects which will influence the degree that you choose to do at uni if you choose to go to uni and then it was kind of like you know you're going from doing really shitty maths tests to all of a sudden having these really big conversations with yourself about what you want to do for the rest of your life and I kind of I don't know I for some reason was like oh I want to be a lawyer I was I could never be a lawyer I don't know why I thought that but then I was like okay what else am I interested in and I've always been interested in music so I was like okay what can I do with that being under 18 there's not really a lot you can do so I decided to go on pedestrian they have like the little job Mm. section and I kind of clicked on the careers looked in what they had in music and there was a purple sneakers advertisement looking for contributors and I'd never written about music before so I was kind of like oh I'll apply for this like why not and I just wrote a few like mock articles sent them in and they were like yeah sounds good shit so your first writing gig was like what sub editor at Purple Sneakers I was just a contributor for like two years and then I when I finished school I became a sub editor shit that's crazy that's a big jump I couldn't have done that it took me like what three years of writing for I was like okay I've decided I can actually (laughs) settle somewhere so that's big do you feel like you were mature at that age I think to yeah. start doing it I think so I had a lot of like family stuff happen younger in my life mm. that I kind of I feel like I was forced to grow up a little bit more but in saying that like yeah I'm very grateful I think I was a pretty switched on teenager in that respect exactly so how long were you sub editor for at Purple Sneakers uh, I was a sub editor for about three no about four years the grind yeah wow. so it's was two years contributing four years sub editing yeah. and then and then when did you start your own blog Oh, I started my... So Pretty broad. I, so, no, I, so I started a blog before that. Oh, right. Um, my mum came up with the name. It was called Indie Kate. <laughs> and <laughs> it's actually still online. I think it's a Tumblr. It's still there somewhere. Um, and I just would write... Like, if I went to a show, I'd just write a review yeah. about it. Like, there's... I went to Odd Future when oh, they were here and I, I was, wrote a review of that. That was, was a weird show. I was looking back on that. 14. Did you go to that show? No, I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I remember Jackson Langford always... 
that guy. <laughs> he always like shout out Jacko. <laughs> shout Jackson. out Jacko. Um, he like whenever we have an argument, it's like, well, I saw Elwolf that M more theater and you didn't, so I don't give a shit. Like, <laughs> what the hell? Like, what an insult! Like for all that kind of oh, to pull out on me. <laughs> it's like you can't, I can't win an argument with that guy because he just well, pulls I saw that I saw you two of your favorite artists in the same night and you were twelve. <laughs> Thanks. Like but yeah, so indicate. Yeah. Yeah, so that was my first kind of blog. And then once I'd been writing for Purple Sneakers for a bit, I kind of got to a point uh, a few years ago when I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to kind of start my own thing. And I'd had this idea in the works for a while where I wanted to, you know, create a space that was solely about, you know, non men in electronic yeah. music. And yeah, that's kind of how Pretty Broad started. It started as a radio show before yeah. the website. Yeah, but that kicked off. That's kind of a bit. Yeah gone by the wayside a little bit but I like to think that the values that I put into that I'm trying to put back into Purple yeah, Sneakers yeah. exactly and I feel like Purple Sneakers is one of the only blogs that's actually pushing that really hard especially in electronic music where there aren't many electronic music blogs like yeah. Stony. shout out shout out Stoney um, but there isn't that much and like the fact that we're feeling an oh we <laughs> we are part of Purple Sneakers yeah <laughs> um, we're feeling a niche in that way is so important to me anyway but we're going to talk about that a bit later yeah. I think um, what was it like going from sub editor to managing editor? Was that that jump? Yeah, yeah, that was. What when Emma? Yes, yeah, so that was recently as well. Yeah, that was only in September. Shit. It's it was a bit crazy because originally, so Emma basically got landed a job in Brisbane doing PR full time, mm-hmm. which is amazing for her. Yeah. That's what she'd always wanted a full time career in the industry. Yeah. And Martin came to me and he was like, look because we have a strategic partner with Music Feeds, uh, so that, that company, Evolve Media, so basically yeah. they just do like sales representation for us, they help us get some advertising, and they're really great to work with, like I think the, just the advice that they've given me as a business person has been really invaluable. But um, yeah, so Emma left, and there was kind of this whole, when, and also Martin was thinking about leaving as well, he's like, I don't really, I'm not in music that much anymore, like he was only really, continuing purple sneakers because and martin is the owner of purple sneakers yeah at this time. so martin is the, the, yeah. the previous owner now of, of, of purple yeah. sneakers and the founder and yeah so he basically was kind of like i don't know what i want to do i'm <coughs> ready to get out of music and do my own thing and he kind of came to me and was like look we don't have a plan yet but we do you want to be the interim editor so just while we kind of like get a plan mm. going and get everything ready and yeah that's that's kind of how that whole conversation started yeah yeah that's sick what what was that jump like for you? Did you feel you were like, even though you said you were ready for it, did you, once you jot into it, were you ready for it? Or do you feel like you just got like slapped you in the face and that's how you learned so much? Yeah, it was really funny. So when Emma originally got the job, I also applied for the job and I didn't get the job. Emma mm. got the job and I was a bit upset by it, but you know, things happen for a reason, exactly. obviously. But yeah, I think, um, I just lost what I was thinking. <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> I don't even know what the question was. This is, I'm not asking questions. It's a conversation. Oh, wait, making um, the jump to managing Emma. Yeah, like how does it... Was it a big jump for you? Yeah. And it like slapped you in the face and that's how you learned so quickly? Or do you feel like you're ready for it? I think I was kind of ready for it. I'd been taking... A, so when Emma went on holidays, mm. I would edit for her. So I think the longest I did was like six weeks at a time. Right. And so I, from that aspect, I knew what I was doing. But I think the thing that really kind of hit me that I didn't expect was the creative control over it. Like... You know, it's kind of like when you're taking over from someone else while they're gone, it's kind of like, okay, well, I'm just taking care of this for them. But when it's your own thing, it's kind of like, oh, I can think outside of that mm. now. I can kind of take that to a place that they might not have thought of or exactly. steer it in their, my yeah. own direction. Yeah. Um, just to jump, because I think it's a nice overview. Oh, it's a nice jump to it. So now you own Purple Sneakers yes. after all that like, process. Yeah. Um, what is your goal for the blog now that may have differed to what it was before? So what do you think that you your reign yep. will change from Martin's? I think it's, it's a hard question because there's so many things that yeah. I want to do. But I think the main thing that I want to do is, you know, keep pushing, you know, diverse coverage. I want to tell more stories as well. Give artists the opportunity to, you know, not just sit. Like, I think there's something really impersonal about sitting on a phone with someone for 15 minutes. Like, if you've ever done an interview before, it's like your standard is 15 minutes with an yeah. artist over the phone and that's it and you, you don't really get to cover much it's kind of just like yeah. oh you've got a new song you're on tour cool, cool. that's like, that but what are your influences yeah. who did you listen to when you were younger <laughs> who did I listen to when I was younger oh that's a good oh, no, question I was just, that was oh a... yeah yeah to the artist <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> if I was doing an interview like this I'd be like 
Okay, Umurka. Like, who are your biggest musical influences? What else is in the, What's a classic Where'd question? Where'd you get your name from? Yeah. <laughs> um, my parents? <laughs> um, what are the classic interview questions? We've all been there. Oh, this. Um, it's yeah. There's you, so many. Are you bands. excited for your hometown show? That, yeah. That's probably such a good feeling playing a theater in your hometown. Like, yeah. What can we expect from your show? I remember my first Q and A was with Ocean Alley, and I couldn't find the time to do it on the phone because <laughs> I was at school. Yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, just send over some questions, and I did. We did like an actual Q and A, and it was the cringiest shit I've ever done <laughs> in my life. But it was awesome. Yeah. And I remember that. Kiara Skura album came out and I had like on my own personal blog I had this like Q&A interview was the weirdest thing and then they won the Triple J Hottest 100 <laughs> like I interviewed this guy <laughs> oh that was so it was the shittest interview I've written but it was awesome yeah they were like oh I was like you know when you ask an artist a question and like they take it to a wrong place it's like so what's the difference between touring in like Europe and Sydney I was like oh the crowds like I was hoping for like a Oh, the crowd's like the hard rock in Europe, but here it's a bit more singy songy. Yeah. But they're like, oh, the beers are better in Europe. Like Australian beers are okay. I'm like, are you serious? And you being like under 18, you're like, can't relate. <laughs> Maybe I can. No, we're not talking about. That. I'm done. Um, yeah, so that, like, who are your. F- so let's get a bit more macro level. Yeah. Who are your favorite artists in Sydney right now? That's a good question. There's, I feel like every day there's like someone else popping up that I'm like, that's sick. Also, um, what is? I'm, I'm not slandering these artists. What is this synth pop like? I swear, ninety ninety percent of the songs I write, <laughs> yeah, about on purple sneakers are like seventies drums, yeah, like these synth pop keys, whispery vocals. <laughs> I, I swear I've said that like term like at least forty times on purple sneakers. <laughs> You know what? I have a lot to say about that. I feel like... that. You know, there was this whole argument a few years ago about artists... uh, Or Triple J only putting a certain sound on their station and Mm. and then artists were catering to that because that was going to guarantee them radio play. I feel like that has kind of translated into this new kind of electronic pop sound that's coming through. Not to say that it's a bad thing. There are some artists that are doing it well, but... It's all Cosmos Midnight's fault. (laughs) They ruined (laughs) it for everyone. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So, who do you think are like... Yeah. If you had to pick, like, list of Sydney artists that you think it's like five years time. Yeah. That's them. Or Andy Garvey. For, for sure. Like, she's top of my list. I think she's already killing it. She's touring Europe and runs her own label, yeah. and she's a really big inspiration of she's mine. A man. Um, AK Sports as well. Maddie yeah. Carr. She's just actually moved to Europe, so she, she's taking the plunge, making the jump. Lex Deluxe. Uh, <laughs> gotta say Lex. Gotta say Lexi. Shout she's out. been working her heart out. Yeah. Um, she's actually quit her day job and she's working on music full time. I really, I really value that. That's a really hard That's decision dedicated. to make. So you, you, like the passion's really there. I yeah. really, yeah, I really value that. Uh, who else? Um, there's a lot of new artists as well that are getting signed, like Donatachi. Shout mm-hmm. out to him. He's killing it as well. Just been signed to etc. etc. I'm really excited for what's to come for him. Sick. Um, we're talking before about skin on skin as well. The like, man. I love UV boy, but man, skin on skin is like. <laughs> To be fair, oh, I yeah. don't hate me. No one hate me for this. <laughs> I saw him launch the house project. I'm like, what's trending right now? Yeah. I thought I thought he was gonna bring out this like Dom Dollar, like no offense to Dom Dollar because he's killing it. This Dom Dollar like tech house, like this yeah. mad commercial house project just to get some plays and stuff. Yeah. And then I heard Walk Up to Your House, like the oh, demo yeah. for it, and I was like, nah, this is it. Yeah, this is legit. And I remember I had to choose between okay, I can go to Mall Grab and watch Skin on Skin perform. Like a support, yep. I can watch Garvey support, and that was like one of the biggest decisions I've ever had to make in my life. That's a tough decision. It's like yeah. choosing which child to kill. It's yeah, like, and like <sighs> I stand those Steel City guys. Like from a branding perspective, they have the most elite branding I've ever seen in music. Like, yeah, but yeah, Skin on Skin's insane. Yeah, definitely. And then like every like not mad, but Lex, Skin on Skin, Garvey, mm. they're playing Splendor. Yeah. All of them. Yeah, exactly. And like, it's cool to see that, like, underground dance music at Splendor playing big stages as well. Like, fuck off stages to fuck off crowds. That's what I said this morning. Yeah. So that's awesome. Like, I'm so proud. Oh, yeah. The recognition is there. I think that's something that's become really cool about, you know, the music scene in the, this country at the moment. Like, the underground is kind of starting to become a little bit less yeah. the underground. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. And you see the crowds at these shows, they're not like what you'd expect. Like, 
I'm a caricature of what someone would expect. <laughs> I like I'm looking. I don't want to throw you in the bus. You are as well of of one of these like club shows. Yeah. But like you go to a club show and you see people that are like. Not, not normal, but you know what I mean? Like someone that you wouldn't typically expect to be at yeah. this dance, like underground, like definitely playing like this garage or like hardcore house. <laughs> and it's like these kids that are just like out of school. It's like, what should we go to Sydney at tonight? Yeah. Which like, I think it's like not a positive of the lockouts. Not There's no positives of the lockouts. But if there's one thing where it's like people are forced to go and witness underground cultures more than they ever have to because yeah. a lot of the generic stuff is just getting washed. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I think it's also a case of like, if you know where to look, there's, there's good stuff there. Yeah, exactly and, right. And I think, like, people are slowly starting to tap into that more, which is good. It's just the issue of complacency, I feel. It's, it's the narrative. Huge. It's yeah, definitely, it is. It's the lockout narrative, but I guess we'll talk about that. Yeah, later. no, just hold <laughs> on to that thought. Um, what's your favourite moment at a show, watching a show, not DJing? Oh, that's that's like, really Like, list of a couple. I've had a few, like, local gigs or just gigs in general? Life. Oh, life. Okay, one of my... F- oh, there's a few to do with drugs, but I don't want to talk about that. Don't, don't. <laughs> um, all right, I'll say one, and yeah, then you can go, go find so you can think. What was it? I'm trying to think. What was the last concert I went to? Tom Dahl. <laughs> that, we'll ignore <laughs> that. That was good, though. That was fun, yeah. but for the wrong reasons. I have one. Yeah. Um, I went to see Mala at the Civic Underground. Yeah. It's not like the tech house DJ Mala, but like yeah, OG dubstep right. Mala. Yeah. And he closed his set, this is at the Civic Underground, closed it with Is This Love? And everybody in the room was just like hugging each other and singing all the words. And it was just like, it was a really beautiful moment. I think that's, it's, you know, I think that's what exemplifies dance music for me. It's like this coming together. It's community. Dance music is community more than anything else. Totally, yeah. Also, and on that, um, mine, like you'll appreciate this as well. James Pepper played at Lost Paradise. Yeah. Midnight set. Um, shout out Caitlin Moore Portia yeah it was like everyone I, like because Peking Duck was playing CC Disco was playing so these two like if you like dance music go to CC Disco if you like the more commercial stuff go to Peking Duck yeah it was like every like our entire extended friendship group was dancing watching our friend play at midnight and like Portia and Caitlin had like little sparklers and shit and it was like the most beautiful and he played um, Floor Plan yeah Ain't Got No Lie oh what's that song called I've forgotten it now yeah and it was like it was like the most magical moment and like i think people underestimate the communal like when i like music i like the communal effect of music yeah definitely and it definitely influenced my taste like the fucking most i think so too and i think that's definitely like i've been on a bit of a home streak at the moment but i feel like that's definitely something that motivates me to go out to gigs Mm. is you know obviously the music's good but like the community like you know Mm oh, this artist playing, so I think these people are going to head along, so that'll be nice to see them yeah. kind of thing. So, it's yeah, it's nice. And, like, I like seeing the same people at gigs. Like, you see, yeah. like, I reckon I've seen, like, Louisa and Sandro. Mm. Like, you go out and they get a tap on the shoulder. It's like, oh, who is this? And it's them. It's like, oh, like my friends. <laughs> like, and it's like you see the same people every gig and there's that, like, little effect of, like, hey, like, we're both in this together type thing. Yeah. I think people should stop being afraid of going to gigs alone. Like, that's I think the thing. last... That's something that I tried to really get myself out of in this last year and I think I've gone to about five shows by myself every single time I've gone there I've seen someone that I know so it's like it doesn't like you don't have to see someone you know yeah exactly I went to watch a band that shall not be named by myself (laughs) I went to review um like when I was 17 whatever yeah got me in to an 18 plus show that's mad awesome unreal dead by myself the best night in my life that's so good um yeah and like I don't know people just forget like what are you coming here for? Yeah. To see the music. Definitely. And like, no one judges it. Like, like that's why it's the best. Yeah. I've like, like, like 2 a.m. in a club is like the prime no judgment environment ever. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh. Everyone's kind of, yeah, everyone's settled. Everyone's kind of found their spot yeah, on the exactly. dance floor as well. And it's just nice. That's Good why that 11.30 to 12 is a bit rough. Yeah. Because everyone's sort of coming in. Everyone's like, oh. Where's my, f- Where's my mate? Oh, oh hey. Like, yeah. you get a tap on the shoulder. Like, oh, yeah, hello. Yeah, I'm here. Whatever. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> and then okay, everyone's just like, so it's like, okay, we've got the context. Everyone yeah. hits a smoking area for a bit just to take a breath. Chill it out. And then once yeah. the headliner starts, everyone's downstairs, got their little rolls. Yeah, literally. I love it. You kind of look around the room and everyone's, you know, people are dancing in a circle together or they're in like two lines or it's really cute. That's why I love Civic. 
Yeah. Oh, that's my. I think that's my favorite venue in Sydney. It's just the perfect, especially when the DJs are down. Yeah. At the bottom, like on yeah. the floor, everyone's just there. It's like yeah. you can grab some random person <laughs> singing. It's like, I love you, man. <laughs> um. Oh, so DJing. What's your favorite moment DJing ever? Like oh, on the other side. That's a really good question. I've had. I've, I've definitely had my ups and my downs, as I think every DJ What was the last has. show you played? The last show I played... Oh, I played last night in Bondi, but that was kind of just like a yeah. side hustle gig. Well, as Purple Sneakers DJs. Purple Let's Sneakers DJs. Uh, well, the girls went to Adelaide over the weekend, but I've had an ear infection, so I didn't go last week. But the week before, we played at Comfy Girl yeah. um, at Tokyo Sing Song. Actually, I think that's my favourite show of ours ever. We got to play a three-hour set, which is so rare. So rare to play a three-hour set. Yeah. And like... We were kind of wigging out a bit because we were like, oh, we've never played three hours before. Do we have enough music? And I I think we, we did well. Like, we had people dancing right until 4 a.m. The club was, like, full. They had to turn the lights on. And everyone was like, oh, can we play one more song? And Did you play another song? No, we couldn't. <laughs> Caitlin. I know. I meant to live on the edge. I told you this. <laughs> no, I was meant to come to that. Yeah. Um, but it was after... It was after... A winter um, dance. Yeah, that's right. What an evening. Yeah. I just crashed. It was so loud. At winter dance. At winter dance, really. It was just loud. Like, yeah. Guys, maybe I'm getting old. <laughs> you need to get some uh, in ears. Oh my God. Yeah. Everyone tells me that. Yeah. Shit. I feel so bad for what I've done to my ears. You know what? I actually, because I have this ear infection, I went to an ENT the other day and this is totally off topic, but he made me do a hearing test because I told him I work in music and I was like, okay, I'm ready for the worst. Shit. Like I'm going to have terrible hearing. And he came back. He's like, you have perfect hearing for someone Shit. your age. I was like, what? That is so lucky. Wow. Okay. So... There you go. Your, your hearing probably isn't that bad. Don't. I don't need that. <laughs> like, but I don't. I don't want to enable you. But <laughs> you are. Hold me accountable for my actions. <laughs> no, we shouldn't joke about that shit. Um, what's it going? What's it like going from like oh, I'm going to write about music to I'm going to perform music now? Like yeah. how's that transition? Honestly, the hardest bit was like just getting confident with the skills because I think like you feel really good when you get the mix perfect and yeah. like it's seamless but then when you fuck it up it feels terrible yeah and you look around the room and you kind of see people looking at you giving you a weird look and you're like oh i fucked that up but it's only the <laughs> assholes that are out that do that like I, oh, that's yeah. some shit that i'd be like dodgy mix <laughs> and everyone's like yeah good shout Barry. but like other than that people don't care that much i don't think yeah oh yeah i think like something that i've learned over my two and a half years djing is it's not really about your skills as a mixer it's about all about your track selection yeah like if you you could be playing your favorite tracks, but the dance floor might absolutely hate them. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's about picking your moments and you know, yeah. How do you find compromising then? Do you find you compromise a lot, or it's like um, yeah. my music taste is this big? Yeah. It's like I can have pick little circles that suit everyone, or do you feel like you have yeah. to compromise sometimes? It's so I do a lot of like side gigs like at mm. Kings Cross Hotel yeah. and like Bondi Beach Road, and that's just kind of like they give me a brief, and then I kind of play to that. But that's like whatever. But when it's my own music, I kind of. I, I prepare I, I like to prepare two playlists I prepare like the this is what I would want to play and then I prepare this is probably what I should throw in if people aren't really vibing yeah. it so just yeah I think it's always good to be prepared for both yeah yeah I'm just taking notes know. over here <laughs> okay, um, that's it like this. DJing is so it's unpredictable like you never know how many people are going to be there what the vibe is like like you know whether you might come with a whole playlist of techno and then no one likes techno and then yeah. you're like oh shit <laughs> techno is so edgy to play out I feel I love techno and I rarely get the chance to play yeah. techno so book me I feel like <laughs> <laughs> you're, not trying to, you're not trying to sell your soul on this platform yeah. no, no we, had it, we already talked no <laughs> um, yeah I feel like even when I go out and you're like everyone just plays soul house yeah. and like disco it's like Let's mix it up. Like, if you have yep. that reputation, fine. Yep. But I've seen DJs where it's like, oh, I need some lo-fi tonight. Yep. And they're playing, like, this, like, Kanye, like, chirpy, like, ah, like, this, um, like, squirrel, uh, chipmunk, chipmunk, <laughs> yeah, that's just, the yeah, word. Like, like ch- yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, chipmunk, like, sampled house, like, like sampled yeah. soul with, like, tuff, tuff. it's like, we've heard this, we need some Get, hard Bring shit. some variety, yeah. And then that's what I think that, and more grabs, like, doing this now as well it's like everyone expects the just want you pool party music whatever yeah and then it's like oh no 
let's play some techno now all these skater kids are like yeah have you heard this new techno song it's like shut the <laughs> fuck up man you know shit <laughs> go back to disco <laughs> i love that he's turned into like a fully fledged techno demon i now. said that did yeah, i did yeah, that yeah. in my words <laughs> no actually i got that from a youtube comment oh no i stole that and changed one of the words was that did you get that from the boiler room comments on yeah, the youtube um, i saw that's where i saw it in london the London Boiler Room show. <laughs> no, but then I copied yeah. that and yeah. changed it. And I was like, ah, ha, ha, ha. No it's one. mine now. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I love that EP though. It is a really good EP. Moogie's good. The, yeah. the one that's coming out now sounds sick as well. Yeah. The previews sound crazy. Yeah. He just keeps upping it. Like, I, th- I feel like he's one of those artists you think that he's going to release something and then he'll release the complete opposite of what you thought. Yeah. It's really good. And it's like... Artists underestimate branding. Definitely. And like, yeah. Credit, like, massive credit to what he's doing is his branding is impeccable. Yeah. And yeah. like, he's just a brand that people really want to. It's right, you're good. <laughs> um, he's a brand that people really want to um, emulate almost. And like, it's so infectious. Yeah. It's like everyone loves that shit because he's pretty as fuck. Yeah. Like, we can't deny it. That guy is pretty as fuck. <laughs> And makes like relatively good tunes, and it makes you feel like a fucking edge lord listening to it, which yeah. is like what kids want. Mm. Anyway, well, sidetrack. I think I think as well, like he, he is like a, such a model example of what it means to be an artist in the twenty first century as well. Like it's all well and good to be talented, but if you don't know how to market yourself and you don't know how to you know get yourself out there, like you're gonna be stuck in your bedroom. Yeah. And I think that like him and everything that he's touched, Still City Dance Discs, uh, Looking for Trouble, like yeah, that now. you know, it's all really well done and he's very I think he's very self aware yeah and that's I think why he's been so and he successful. plays on that as well yeah t- and oh, totally, all, good yeah. Ar- all good artists will play on that look mm. how self aware I am I'm taking the piss out of myself almost that's how crazy it is like yeah he'll post a fit pic like little Uzi but will post a fit pic and be like <laughs> like hey I'm cute as shit in the comments yeah. and everyone's like yes you are so cute Uzi like yeah <laughs> and that's why like I love Playboy Cardi I love ASAP Rocky because they all know yeah what they are and they feed it yeah and like and like I think Lex is doing that to an extent as well. Definitely. I think Morat is the best at that shit. She oh, she's, sells. She's got it on lock. Coda Banks too. I gotta say, yeah. she's really good on socials too. They're, yeah, they've all got it on lock. And like, so like Morat's like, I'm so cute, and I just have fun. It's like if I walk into <laughs> room, everyone's gonna be like, ah. Yeah. And then Coda's like, I walk into room, and everyone's gonna be like, yeah, we're all fucking bosses. Yeah. And just playing on that, and I think that branding is like, everyone's going crazy now. It's important. I think now it's not about how much money your label's going to put into your marketing. It's about how authentic an artist yeah. you are on For and sure. off your tracks. Of course. Yeah. Um, host a radio show as well, don't you know? What radio show is yeah. that? Yeah, I do Purple Sneakers yeah. on FBI Radio. Yeah. What's it like? Did you... So you went from... So, like, where's that in the timeline? So, I graduated school in 2013, and I applied for FBI Radio training in 2014. Yeah. On, literally on a whim. I'd never thought about doing radio before. I'd think i'd only listened to fbi a few times before that as well but i knew that they were like really prominent in sydney music sydney music arts and culture and i kind of applied on a whim and i got through to the so they do like a group interview and it it was the most daunting honestly the most daunting experience of my life like i sat down i was fresh 18 i'd been contributing for purple sneakers i worked at jb hi-fi and that was about it and i was sitting there and they kind of went around the table like oh what do you all do and there was one guy who was like, oh, I have just moved back from America. I run a publication, uh, blah, blah, blah. And there's this other girl who's like, oh, I run a record label. And there was like all these people actually in the industry. And I was kind of like, oh, I like Mac DeMarco and I'm 18. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how I got through. And yeah, I've been there for five years now. Shit. Yeah. That's insane. I feel like if you twist your words well enough, though, it sound, you're going to sound industry as fuck. Oh, definitely. It's about confidence. Exactly. And yeah. like... You've probably done it before, but <laughs> when I meet someone, like, what do you do in music parry? It's like, oh, I'm sub editor at this Sydney, um, <laughs> like, it's a boutique Sydney dance music blog called yeah. Purple Sneakers. I've also just launched my own media publication, a uh, media company. <laughs> it's called Parry Talks. It's this new thing. It's, and like, say so if you, up. if you, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> if you push your words well enough, like, yeah. you can look like a fucking boss. Mm-hmm. But that's insane. Did you get it straight away The to get the training? Yeah, I did. Surprisingly. Like, I think. I didn't even I think a lot of people kind of started FBI as a volunteer yeah. and a frontliner and then they progressed to presenter training but I was very lucky where I kind of just was thrown in and I love it I never considered a career in music and I even now like I think I'd love to you know talk on like Apple 
music mm. or beats one or something that'd be amazing but it's not something that I want to pursue as a career yeah. I, I just, don't know if you're yeah. like me in the sense of like I feel like I've come into this from a perspective of I love music media yeah. there's something about that so who are your favourite music media personalities that's a good question personalities <laughs> or just like oh. people that the people that work in yeah oh, I can I always like fuck up her last name Julie Agdona, I think her name is, but she is a presenter on um, Apple Beats One. And I didn't realize, but she's actually Skepta and Jamie's sister. Yeah, sister. Um, yeah a she's d- awesome. She talented awesome family. Yeah. She's so cool. And like every interview she's ever done, I'm like, that is, she's down to earth. She's yeah. real. It's not about like, oh, I want to get all of this no. out of you. It's like just a conversation. Yeah. I don't like Zane Lowe, though. <laughs> I, I, I do. <laughs> what do you, what do you like about it? I don't it? know. Everyone's. Tr- I, 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 all these shit posting pages just, they're just calling oh, cringe they got you. <laughs> no but she's awesome like that's yeah. the ignorance is bliss interview she did with Skeppy is like oh it's so good I know the one where she, he, they talk about his daughter yeah and and so incredible that's where I realised that they were siblings I was like why are they talking like this and then I googled it and I was why like why are they oh, talking like sense. siblings yeah. hang on a second you know she's awesome anyone else uh, Linda Mariano I've got to say yeah. like I don't regularly engage with Triple J but I think she's one of the best presenters the station's ever had she's great we can either talk about this or not talk about this you can <laughs> choose to not talk about it I don't want to shit talk Triple J but <laughs> I don't know I think no I have my thoughts as well but we'll yeah. leave that for another time <laughs> um, um, who else no, I really not... enjoy Shard D'Souza as well yeah other ex-editor for Noisy he now is a, I think the Australian writer for The Fader huge yeah something like that uh, he's like great that. he's a really good voice uh, Hayden Davies as well from Pile Rats I must he, admit I, actually I'm not going to go there <laughs> <laughs> I he blocked me for no reason. Aww, I was blocked for like three months. What? Did he I, know, I, don't know, I didn't do anything. Yeah. That's okay. Maybe he accidentally did it. He had like an old man. Hopefully. It was like, oh, block. Oh no. On Twitter though. Yeah. I yeah. I've I've never met him, but like I really admire all the writing that he's done with no, Paras. Paras is crazy. They're so good. Yeah. I think like there's not. I think there's a lot of music media in Australia that kind of goes under the wayside, and I'm really glad Pile Rats gets the recognition that and they get. Branding again, their branding's awesome. Like oh, when, pe- when I think of Perth music, yeah. what do I think of? Yeah, literally, I, I think of Perth. I think of Pile yeah. Rats. Yeah. And they brought the boys out, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 for the birthday. Shit, for that show looks party. crazy. Sick. Awesome. Yeah. What like so you've got DJing, radio, Pebble Snakes. What project do you care about the most? Oh, that's so tough. <laughs> Or like, I, what do you think, not, let's not say care about the most, Yeah. what do you think the main focus is for you now? The main focus for me now is definitely just Purple Sneakers as a whole. I think like people don't realise it's not just a blog, it's like, you know, we do, we do so many things, yeah. there's so many facets of it that I manage and it's like, it's a lot, like it's a lot to do, but I really enjoy doing it all. And yeah, I think Purple Sneakers as a whole is definitely like what I'm enjoying the most at the moment, but it's just, there's, you know taking on a business comes with a lot of things and it's like I have all these ideas but coming up with ways to fund them is like another thing what do you think the biggest challenge is for Purple Sneakers going forward I think the biggest challenge for us going forward is that's a good question I think just staying afloat I think it's actually like in this digital age like not just looking at Purple Sneakers as a music blog but as like a news publication it's like it's tough it's digital advertising is I think you earn the least amount of money ever from it now than you have ever before. Um, And, you know, it's like I'm on a part-time wage. I don't get paid full-time for this role that I probably work like 50 hours a week on. And, yeah, it's it's tough not having paid staff because, you know, like you want to have people coming on board and doing the best that they can, but you also don't want to expect too much of them because at the end of the day, they're volunteering their time. Exactly. So I think just now it's the the challenge going forward is being resourceful, I think. How, yeah. What do you think that me as a sub editor can do to con- to help the think, survival? Yeah, yeah. I think just like putting your best in, and I think what I really value about our team of contributors is that they're all different. They all are located in different places around the country. They all have different tastes, and that is something that because I don't. At the end of the day, I don't know every artist in the country. I don't listen to every artist in the country. But you know, the more people we have on our team, the more you know, the more diverse network we have of people. So, so just sticking yeah. to that. Yeah, just what like you know. doing your thing, looking for feedback. I think that's the two main things. Oh, I always ask. You do. You're really, you're really great. I'm so annoying though. <laughs> no, you're not. No, I'm so annoying. I'll be like, like every, like 
<laughs> Everyone in my life is like, Parry, you are so fucking annoying. Just settle down. And like, chat. I feel like you just think like a million miles a minute. Dude. And you're like, I need to write that down so I don't forget it. Literally. And I'll just like message you and then like you'll be busy or whatever. And I'll message you the next day and be like, oh, by the way. And then like have like 30 different little. <laughs> <laughs> I get to it. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. That's right. I don't even reply like, to my boyfriend. So. Where's Caitlin? <laughs> and like, I'll be like, oh, for the article. Yep. The triple one one. I was like, I thought of the idea. I'm like, I need to get this out of my head now. Mm. Like typed to email. I was like messaging like, Caitlin, 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 <laughs> Caitlin, Caitlin, Caitlin. <laughs> and then I was like, fuck, I want to get it done this week, this week. I'm like, oh, it's stressing. Like the EP comes out on Friday. Yeah. Like I want to get it done. <laughs> and then you just woke up. I was like, it's chill. Like, okay. And then you sent the email like that afternoon. Yeah. Oh yeah, just come in. And we got it sorted. <laughs> but like, that's just the way my mind works. I'm so annoyed. I know what you mean. It's like once you've got an idea, you want to get it out there yeah. and roll with it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, lockouts. Lockouts. Oh. What? We're not going to talk about oh, it's fucking up your culture because that's, that's the narrative. That's been said and done. Exactly. Yeah. What can us as, like not industry people, us as fans do to combat the lockouts, do you <sighs> think? Go out. Like yeah, for starters, like go out. Like, you know, I think everyone is a homebody now and I don't think that's a bad thing, but I think like this whole, the thing that's been worse for Sydney in terms of the lockout laws hasn't been the laws itself, but the actual narrative of the laws. Like, I talk to people, friends outside of music, and they're kind of like, well, there's nothing on on a weekend. I don't want to go out. And I'm like, you're wrong, though. There's yeah, so there's much so happening much in Sydney. Just because all these venues have closed, that doesn't mean that all the promoters have stopped and all the DJs have stopped and the artists have stopped making music. Like, there's stuff happening. Yeah. So I think it's about showing up, uh, listen to the radio, read read what people put online, and just engage. Like, follow yeah. your favourite artists on social media. You know, like, like their posts. Like, it's... Yeah. It's little things like that actually contribute to the success of someone. Exactly. And yeah. music industry people, I'm going to call you all out. Go out. Stop complaining. <laughs> I it's know. so annoying. I go I on know. Twitter. I'm like, yeah. Oh, God. It's like, go out. I haven't seen you out yet. <laughs> yeah. Show me that you're buying drinks. Show me that you're not asking for comp tickets to everything. Exactly. Pay for a ticket. Exactly. Pay for a ticket. Show up. And even if you're not paying for a ticket, write a review. Like, that is something that annoys me, like, when people are like, oh, I want free tickets to this, I want free tickets to this. Like, even the Purple Sneakers birthday, we had a few, like, not to throw shade on anyone, but people were coming in being like, oh, I work in the industry. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I wouldn't show yeah. up to your show and expect to get in for no, free. No, that's full shade. Yeah. That's, that's full shade. I'm not... So shade to those people that exactly. came in and asked for a free ticket because they work in the industry. It's like... <laughs> to be fair, I was just... <laughs> you work for Purple Sneakers, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> No, you were. That was like we we allocated tickets for the Good. team anyway, so that's fine. But yeah, it's just like if you work in the industry and you're getting to go to shows for free, think about ways that you give can back, give back. Yeah, because yeah, I've been on the other side of it. I throw my own parties, and I think I've only ever thrown two parties that haven't been at a loss. Like I think most promoters would be the mm. same. It's like you throw a party, most of the time you won't make money from it. You do exactly. it because you want to put something on. Exactly. And yeah. bring someone here. So shout out to the promoters that are fucking shout doing out. shit. Shout out to the, the boys. The promoters in Sydney are who are keeping this alive right exactly. now. Exactly. Shout out to fucking Harpoon Harry's. <laughs> shout out to Freighters. Shout out Harpoon Harry's, Freighters. Uh, finer things. Finer things. <laughs> yeah, the boys. <laughs> shout out. Wait. Shout out Heavenly. Shout out Nectar. Shout yeah. out Headroom. Shout out, yeah, Comfy girl. Comfy girl. Comfy girl. Shout out. Um... So good, Jansen's coming to Australia. Oh, Finer things. Coming back. Civic. Coming back. Let's make it happen. I, I heard inklings of Katama as well. Uh, I saw a post on Facebook the other day. I was like, oh, ah, make it happen. <laughs> they have to do it. Yeah. I'm not leaking anything. Like I actually have no idea. Go, Jansen's playing that um, is that festival. Oh, um, um he's, he's playing Strawberry Fields. That's the one. Yeah. Yep. The Uncle Gerd. He's the man. He's he like the, the godfather. Man. Oh, definitely. Surrender is like the best song ever. Yeah. Also, his rework of uh, Julie McDermott's Don't Go. <laughs> Just his whole body room is like the most iconic shit. Honestly, ever. it is. Like, that's something you could put on, like, in your headphones or something you could put on, like, at a party and it's still. Just in the as ring. Effective. Oh, in that yeah. outfit as well with a button up shirt. <laughs> he's steez, man. That yeah. guy's. He knows. He's, he's playing good music and he knows he looks good. <laughs> There you go. There you have it. Recipe for success. <laughs> That's going to be me one day. I'm cute as fuck. <laughs> On the boiler room with your button-up shirt. <laughs> no way. I drift so much harder than a button-up shirt. <laughs> Shout out to Golf Wang. Shout what out. are you wearing today? Um, I'm wearing an Op Shop special. I'm actually wearing nothing special today. I'm, I'm a brand whore. I know. Everyone calls op me Shop, that. Op Shop. These are Winston Smith. They're expensive. They, they're actually a rip-off of another brand. Shout out Naked Wolf. Uh, I think Nina bought some... Uh, she has Naked Wolf ones. I've seen them. Really? Yeah, they're good. 
They're nice. Shit. They're the original ones. These are like the fake knockoffs. That's nice. sick though. I think that fake knockoffs are underrated. Uh, yeah. Coming think, from I me, he's so. like the most hypocritical. Right? <laughs> I think it depends what. Like, I've, I have a big love for sneakers. And yeah. I think there's... Sneakers. Yeah, sneakers. Well, I, I used to have a really big love what for sneakers. What color sneakers? sneakers? But, uh-huh. What color sneakers? Oh. <laughs> purple d- sneakers. Depends. No, I actually... Okay, don't shoot me, but I don't have a pair of purple sneakers. I get asked this probably once a week. I was going to get... A a Golf Lane came out with the one stars before the La Flows and they had these purple ones. Like, oh, oh, cute. But, I slept in. Yeah. I never making the mistake. Yeah. I never making the mistake again. So other than lockouts, back to yeah. Grr. Other than lockouts, what's the biggest issue or challenge or something that we need to take notice of in Sydney music now? Oh, that that's a good question as well. Um, I think it's there's a lot of things. I think like number one, mental health. Check in on your mates. Uh, it can be hard. Particular, like I have four different streams of income. I don't have just one job that i get paid for and i know that can be really tough so just check in on your freelance mates make sure they're doing okay um i think other challenges that we're facing at the moment as well venues oh my god trying to throw a party in a city is so difficult it's like unless your concept is like fully fledged you can prove that it's going to earn heaps of money like most of the time the venue is going to say no yeah or unless you have like a direct connection that's really hard as well so i think I don't know. I don't know how to combat that. That's yeah, just a case of hard. city of um, yeah. the New South Wales government kind of letting up on their licensing laws. But yeah. hopefully that'll come. There's a review happening at exactly the moment. Right. Um, other challenges that musicians face in Sydney as well. I, don't know. I think there's also a lack of just exposure at the moment. Like I yeah. think there's. I'm feeling a real lack of music publications. I think there are the bigger ones out there only cover certain acts within a certain tier. And I think particularly on the same level as Purple Sneakers, there's not many that cover like local acts anymore. So I think that's... So if you want to start a publication, please do it. I just did. <laughs> I go. just fucking did. <laughs> He's looking at me like he you're on that. my platform. <laughs> oh, you guys should start it. <laughs> that was just a general call out. No, I, need, I don't need any more competition though. <laughs> this is it. This is it. I guarantee this is going to get stolen though by some... I can you'll, you'll steal it. No, I don't have the time. <laughs> this is going to be your thing. I think someone's gonna. St- I'm actually like starting. I was like genuinely worried. Like someone's gonna see this and steal it. Like some radio host that has actual connections. No, you have good connections. Sort of. This is great. The idea my friends, for my friends are gonna run out soon though. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta start emailing people. Like I gotta write a press release. Oh, I did write a press release. There you sort go. of sucked though. I'll review. I'll look over it for you if you want. Mum, Caitlin's my mum, by the way. They- <laughs> so if you ever see her post anything. Mom, <laughs> your post. Yeah, you commented on my photo the other day. Mom, <laughs> I'm so fucking funny. <laughs> that was good. Everyone's like, yeah, congratulations, congratulations, mom. mom. <laughs> Dude, I feel like I don't know. I feel like commenting, mom, is more imp- was like you'd be like, oh. Yeah, I know. I looked at that. I was like, yeah. As my son. <laughs> another thing, and like I like that this didn't come up in the issue. Yeah. We have a female DJ revolution in Sydney. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, what? I've got some names here, so I don't want to forget. Lex, yep. Lewin, 82, Andy Garvey, Nina, Louisa, um, Carly. Who else? Um, Holly O'Neill, Venus, Eddie Diamond, oh, Sneakers, obviously, DJs. Purple Sneakers DJs. Uh, Bocconcini, Ondine Manfred. Um, oh, my God. I'm... They're just the people that I see out all the time. There's so many. And I think this has been largely this kind of revolution has come largely because electronic music has always been a very male dominated space. I think it continues to be. And while women have tried to fight to be included in male dominated spaces, I think we've just come to the realization that, Oh, okay. We're not going to be included in this as much. So we're just going to go out and create our own yeah. spaces. So I, which I, th- I think it's cool that like, you know, Lewin started tax yeah. and like, she's been keeping that going beats of no nation as well. Like, um, yeah, there's just there's so many cool women actually. Even Maddie Carr started this Facebook yeah. group called oh, Ladies and Rec. Yeah. Uh, it's a great Facebook group. Uh, there was nothing. I can't believe nothing like that existed before. But it's just like for female DJs and producers and people in the music industry in Australia to come together and just like share gigs or like yeah. share tips or like ask for advice. Yeah. And I think that's been a really really big contributor in kind of opening up the dialogue surrounding yeah. inclusivity. And I feel like. This isn't like that whole... This whole conversation started like a little while ago. Yeah. And I feel like I'm like the one... I'm not the one to be like quotas, quotas, quotas. Yeah. But I feel like as a natural 
flow and effect from that conversation of we need more female representation. Yeah. These are like the bubblings of it. Yeah. And then like, rep- like I, I was mad ignorant. I didn't understand the effect of representation and what it does. Yeah. So I'm just thinking of the next generation of girls coming up. They're going to see these people who are going to get only bigger from here. Yeah. And they're just going to like eventually and then us men are fucked pretty much which is a good thing which is like a perfect thing <laughs> i don't think men are fucked i no, think like, it's like, just like joke. yeah i but think it's just like there's space for women exactly now. no yeah i don't even like it's not space it's like it's it's like come take over some of our shit because like yeah. we've been we've been unfair of it in the past yeah so like yes everyone can win and it's like good to have that sort of mentality but at the same time it's like we need to take a step back a little bit for what we've done in dance music in the past you know what i mean yeah definitely which is like a bit more of a hardcore point of view i think yeah but i think on the, happen, d- on the dj level it's good that it's happening like i think producers and music makers is a whole other thing like there's i know so many female bedroom producers that will never release anything yeah. or like that are scared to release something because it's like oh i don't know if it's good enough but i think yeah the, the dj conversation has definitely sparked up a lot of other conversations that i think are really important and i see that is this is just the beginning mm. Oh, I agree. I and, definitely think. But then at the same time, it's like Sydney and like inner West culture. There's this progressive bias that yeah. like I've grown up in the inner West all my whole life. I'm like, oh yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. But like we actually <laughs> have to take like steps, you know what I mean? <laughs> Otherwise we get, just get trapped in that, yeah. um, that bias. Yeah, you get trapped in the cycle. And like there's still a lot of parties and, and venues in Sydney that I see are very much trapped in that cycle. I don't want to call anyone out, but <laughs> I know, we've had this conversation yeah. before. But I think, yeah, it's it's a case of, like, I think quotas are great. I think quotas are good if you don't talk about them. If, if mm. you're out here advertising your event as an all-female lineup, that's fucking stupid. That's like, oh, so why are they not good enough to be put on any other yeah, lineup? Exactly. Why are you put, lumping them all in together? Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. I think it's about being inclusive in your booking and ensuring that you're making the safe spa- the space safe for those people exactly. to come in and do their thing. Um. Yeah. <laughs> she can Hello. she can come say I knew who that was um yeah well that would weave me out um <laughs> this random person just came around Hello. and I was like I was like she can come <laughs> um people are weird man um what were we talking about talking girls about, in Sydney yeah girls in Sydney <laughs> girls in Sydney how good are girls girls are great um yeah I feel like it's just going to ro- keep rolling over now. Yeah. And I think now as well that people are starting to invest outside of DJing, but like in businesses as well. Like you look at Nectar, mm. you look at New Age wow. Noise. Like there are actually these New really Age cool Noise. female Shout out Sarah to Mim. Yeah. <laughs> but it's <laughs> like there's some really great female-led initiatives that are happening in Sydney. And I think that is what's going to really make the change. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. Um, so that's like more macro stuff. What do you think about from the blog perspective? Yeah. Um, oh, I've already asked that sort of, but like, what do you think other than like the survival? Yeah. Where do you think the biggest challenges are going to come from running a publication in today's day and age? Oh, just money. money. That's like first and foremost money. Like that is the hardest thing of all. Like Purple Sneakers, we're not just one, like we do the blog, we yeah. do other things as well. I'd really like us to throw more parties and do more live shows and stuff, but like obviously all of that comes with a cost. Yeah. So definitely like the money aspect of it is one thing, but... I think that could be navigated. Yeah. That's just like time and effort being put into that. Awesome. So we've had a, like a long discussion about your journey and like half my journey. If there was like a 16 year old you or 16 year old me sitting at home now that's like, oh, I like music. I don't know how to indulge in it. Or I don't want to yeah. be an artist, but I still want to indulge in music. Yeah. What would you recommend them do? Read and ask questions. Read what? Read anything, anything and everything. Publications, like even if you're reading Pitchfork, that's a start. Like, yeah. You know, look closer to home, even Triple J, like they've got some really great articles on their website. I think it's just about, uh, yeah, reading a lot, taking it all in and, you know, like if you have a question, send an email to the editor. Like, you know, if I got a question from a 16 year old being like, hey, how do I write for a publication? Like I would happily, you know, take them under my wing or something. But yeah, I don't, I, I feel like actually something that I've noticed recently, I feel like there's a generational gap in electronic music at the moment. I don't know if that's just because the lockouts have affected the way younger kids... I don't know, because you're a lot younger 
not a lot younger than me, but like you're a few years younger than me. Do you find that like people your age don't tend to go out? No, oh, no, I think it's the opposite. You think it's the opposite? We're crazy. We <laughs> love this shit. Like we'll, we'll see an event and everyone's like swarm. Mm. And it's the same group of us, like 15 to 30 of us will see the same events. Yeah, that's cool. I feel like I don't see anyone older. Yeah, that's uh, so interesting. Because I look at people like my sisters, they're younger, I have three younger sisters. And they just like don't go out. They're the kinds of people that like they would go to like uh, opera bar and have a few drinks with their girlfriends like that's kind of what they do and but I feel like yeah even in the non-lockout sphere oh yeah those people will do the same thing yeah d- yeah that's true that's true that's very true so I think it's about <laughs> but it's like the community is the community yeah, doesn't exist without those people and it doesn't yeah. and there's like on that point as well there's a lot less room for growth yeah in that sphere yeah totally because of the context we could say yeah um, and I think in that you know when you're going out to have drinks and not engage in culture it's not about community at that point it's about no, it's just, just having your friends. a good time yeah it's just about how able to like convince these people don't have drinks at the opera bar come to half in harry's it's pretty quiet yeah <laughs> have a quiet saturday yeah it's cute like it's fine it's it closes nice early yeah. it is nice i love that place oh it's a beautiful pub it's honestly one of the b- most beautiful pubs in sydney the art deco is really it's nice. the second most beautiful pub in sydney what's the first <laughs> Shout out to Lord Gladstone Hotel, man, my home. Um, for putting... Shut up. Um, yeah, shout out. <laughs> um, putting this on, we wouldn't do this without a venue like this, and this is one of the only venues that's trying, I guess. I think so too. I think, especially throughout it all, like Sydney, you know, I, I feel like you hear of a different venue closing every week. Like more recently, Cake Wine Cellars, that was really sad. Hearing that they're closing that venue down. But yeah, I feel like the Lord Gladstone has persist th- persisted through everything and it's great to see. Like we, all our vivid events started at the Lord Gladstone for Purple Sneakers. So it's yeah. really great to see it's thriving yeah. still. And yeah. saw that as well. I probably met you for the first time when I was that old. Yeah. Here. Yeah. In this and another venue. thing as well, advice. If you're a kid and you want to get into music, show your face. Yeah. Be everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Go to every gig you can. And say hi. Exactly. Just yeah. don't be afraid to go up to somebody like, oh, by the way. I like uh, just just be stupid just go out to people don't be ashamed because people appreciate it yeah definitely don't be closed off be open minded like how did we meet we met I actually don't know how I we met I find a thing oh no I find <laughs> things open it was sort of just like oh that's oh yeah right. this is Caitlin Caitlin's apparel I was like hey Hi. that's right because I was talking to Nina yeah and then yeah. the next or maybe not the next week a month later mm. I saw her at Blue Line Steppers yeah. what an event oh that was the best shout out of leisure <laughs> I'll tell you that story later as well. <laughs> um, no, so I just like went up to Caitlin. I saw Caitlin like a blurry eye. Like, oh, that's that person I met. So I just went up to her and I was like, hey, I'm Harry. You remember me? And she was like, yeah. And then I met Lex that day as well. Yeah. And she was like, oh, yeah, I think I know you. And then the next day I saw Lex at Summer Dance. And she yep. was like, oh, Parry. And then just small shit like that, those small interactions. So whenever I go out now, yeah. if I see them, they're going to be like, hey, it's Parry. Yeah. And then like those things build up. So instead of it being just like those two people, if I go say hello to 30 people, yeah at a thing or like in life every time i go out i'm gonna have that interaction yeah definitely and that's how you become part of a community exactly. as well yeah and like i saw you then at um what event was that at chingalings that night you dj'd i went home a bit early because <laughs> oh. was that lazy susan yeah 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 have played that night as well yeah yeah that was a good night oh, he killed drama it. he killed uh, it forget i'm a teenager <laughs> yeah i was like oh i gotta go home but then i saw you that night as well i was like hey caitlin do you remember me and she's like of course i do yeah and then there's small shit like that. And then when I, and then for the kids, when I message Caitlin, when Caitlin puts up, oh, we're looking for a sub and yeah. I message her, it's like, oh, Parry, I've seen him out all the time. Yeah, exactly. I know, I know what he's about. Exactly. And, and it's, yeah. it gets to the point where it's like hardly even about skills. Like you're going to learn the skills no matter what. Exactly. And that's it. I think also like people shouldn't be, if you want to, if you want to write for a blog, like don't be scared about the writing aspect of it. Like at the end of no. the day, the editor is there to give you feedback. I like can't if you're write. passionate enough. <laughs> That's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. Like, I can't write. I re- like, <laughs> you're a good, no, you're a very good writer. You are a very good writer. I'm, I'm, I'm more a, like a structure and like, I'm going to tell this, about, write about this song in this way. Yeah. And then the sentences are, can be a bit dodgy on the way through, but the story is told. I, I think every, something that I've noticed editing the website is every writer has their own method. Yeah. And every writer has their own colourful vocabulary that they use to describe things. Every way. Oh, I have so many crutch words. Like, I use the word lush all the time. Uh, whispery else? vocals all day. Every vocal <laughs> is whispery. Whispery vocal. Synth pop. 
<laughs> synth pop now, fuck that shit. <laughs> if I get one more synth Shut pop up. song in my emails, so no, I'm joking. Next I love week, it. Miami Horror. I already wrote about that. I know, it was good. I actually really I, like I that. I like that song as well. Yeah, it was a good write up. Back to their roots. But synth Back to their roots. <laughs> <laughs> another cliche oh I oh, love yeah. that shit oh another one is uh, fans are eagerly waiting their album I'm keen to see what the future holds <laughs> hopefully we see them at our shores yeah true that's a good one too damn I'm a walking cliche no nah, the more I think about there's just a lot of easy traps to fall in with writing about yeah. music I do them all the time what do you think um like on the same topic of like how do you start off or yep. get involved yep. what are some things that are like have worked for you specifically oh, um, that's a good question I feel like applying for jobs in the music industry is like entirely different than applying for like a retail mm-hmm. job or something I think it's just about showing what you I don't know I think it's about having showing that you have a good understanding of the community that you're part of showing that you're passionate as well I think that's another thing like yeah. you know not just it's one thing to be like oh I love this but it's another thing to be like I'm engaging in this culture yeah um, and just talking like I think like the people that I've really enjoyed having writing for the blog are the ones that ask the most questions and <laughs> no but it's true it's like you I'm know doing, I, I'm, I'm doing the right thing I man. consider Purple Sneak as a stepping stone for a lot of people like it's at the end of the day like this is my thing now it's my business but like I was at uni once and I was looking for experience once and like at the end of the day like I'll write a reference I'll, yeah. I love writing references I'll write a glowing reference for anyone who's written for Purple Sneakers yeah. it's about giving people the experience and that kind of tagline that they can put on their resume and so even that yeah. like, for, like for me reflect, I'm not writing on Purple like, I mean, I'm not doing it for experience it's just like I just need a, a mm. platform to, in, to Definitely. Just, like, get it out like, yeah. you know what I mean and that Purple Sneakers is perfect for that Definitely. I and I, I like, I think our approach to coverage is really positive. Yeah. We don't like, no. we, our thing is if you're going to say something negative, why say it at all? It's like, if we could write 300 words saying something positive about an artist, why would we waste 300 words saying something negative about an artist? So yeah, it's about positivity. And I think that's something that I like to think carries on through yeah, all our sure. Yeah. Um, let's talk about lineups. Yeah. I think the phono lineup was pretty good. I really like it. I don't know. I think a lot of people didn't like it, but I'm really into. I like Brockhampton. Rap at the gonna... oh, <laughs> Brockhampton gonna be good. Rico Nasty, Lizzo, what? I know it's gonna be good. Um, Big Nina chilling it as well. Oh my! Amazing. God. That's I, gonna be yeah. chaos. That's she. Honestly, like since the, her debut EP, she's been killing it. I'm so, so much to come. As I'm well. so it's stoked crazy. for her. Yeah, she's one of those artists that I feel like I've been following like from the start. I know, and so she has a I feel that as well. If you're heart. writing, yeah. pick an artist and buddy them. Oh, definitely. That's so big. Yeah. I've done that. So I started with, I used to listen to like folk music. Yep. Well, we all had like an indie folk phase, don't worry. <laughs> and like, I, I remember my first thing I ever wrote was an interview with Ziggy Alberts when he was like playing in a church. Yep. And then it's like, so just buddy an artist and you never know. Yep. So now he'll come to Sydney play theatre and be like, Parry, are you coming? Yep. So like buddy an artist, that's so important. Yeah, definitely. It is. And it's like, yeah do you remember your first ever face-to-face interview um i love asking people this question i think it was with nina yeah when i had my own when i had parry's world and that was actually a thing yeah which did awesome yeah i did it with just her just sat down whatever yeah it was cool um i never feel i haven't felt comfortable interviewing people that i don't really know until now yeah it's a hard barrier to break because it's extremely personal I asking someone I about just, like, their craft. Yeah. Yeah. And building trust. Oh, totally. Journalists are dickheads. Yeah. We're assholes. <laughs> We're so annoying. Oh, I know. I know. If there's one thing that I've learned as a journalist, it's find out beforehand what an artist doesn't want to talk about. Yeah. That's, that's like, you can actually, that's something that I think journalists don't know. Like if, like, it's just a simple email. Hey, is there anything the artist doesn't want to talk about? And that's. Also, though, if you're yeah. interviewing an artist, First thing you say to them, off the record, everything. Tell them, build trust and tell them why you're doing the interview and why yep. you appreciate their craft. Definitely. It makes so much of a difference. Definitely. And ask how they are as well. Exactly. Like, how are you? It's as simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Listen out? Oh, my God. Listen out. That lineup is insane. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I haven't have a ticket yet. I'm going to say what I say every year about listen out, though, and I think they could be more female representation. For sure, mate. But in saying that, like, they're at the forefront of 
international. They're, they've got their finger on the pulse. They know. They every year they know. Yeah. It was alright last year. I thought the lineup was crazy last year. It was just like so many people go. They have yeah. to raise their stage. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna say one weird. thing yeah. and say make your stage high. If you've got yeah. thousands of people, no one can see shit. And it's like flat ground as well. And that's why, the back, yeah. And that's why nobody like I love listening out. Always have a good time. Yep. But everyone squashes to the front because they can't see shit. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And that's why. And they know it as well, Fuzzy. They know that people are going to get <laughs> fucking trampled this year. Oh, no. <laughs> it always happens. Every time I've been. Yeah. And, oh, listen, that's crazy for me because I love Mac Miller, like, the most. Yeah. And I remember Brockhampton had his set time from the year before. Yeah. And I was standing there waiting for Brockhampton to start. And my mate's like, Bud's me. And he's like, did you say Mac played last year? I was like, shut the fuck oh, no. up. Not now. So I just had to walk to the back. Like, oh my God. Like, it's like getting emotional. Get out of here. Not now. I'm getting emotional now. Like, just not now. It's like, I always love listening out for that. Yeah. Wow. What else? I feel like these indie, these boutique, I hate that word. Yeah. Dance music festivals are going huge as well. Output's probably going to be massive this year. If Output they do it again. is my favorite festival. Like, I love, not just because we work really closely with Under Control at Matoric, but like, they know how to put on a good festival, mm. and I think it is world class. It is. It's ridiculous. It's world class. Like you look at their lineup last year: DJ Seinfeld, Hi, Mall Grab. Like, Hi. Oh my god. What? And Ludes look at those artists well. now. Ludes. Yeah, Ludes. <laughs> what? Shout out, Big Daddy Ludes. Oh, that shout guy's out. The man. Just like, I think yeah, output definitely. They. It is a world class festival. Like days like this as well. Days like this. Oh, definitely. Oh, my friends had some bad experiences at days like this this year, but the lineup was really good. We'll keep it at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are, um, I feel like. I feel like the big festivals are slowly catching on to our dance culture. I kind I feel a bit bitter about it though, because I'm like, why are they just catching up now? Like, who's like their, what's their better, motive? <laughs> better now than never, though. Yeah, that's true. I think, like, like you said before, it's good to see artists like Andy and Lex and... Playing know, Splendor. Playing Splendor, exactly. Because, like... And they'll have huge crowds. Like, Garvey is a hype set, yeah. I think. For yeah. Me. Like, I don't, maybe that's my blind eye. Yeah. But I think that kids are going to be saying, like, let's check the set times came out today for us. Yeah. Kids are going to be saying, like, oh, Andy Garvey's playing six to eight on that stage. Like, normal kids. Yeah, that, like, exactly. don't know anything about dance music. Like, yeah. oh, I think I've heard of her before. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's going to be unreal. Well, and she presents on Triple J, too. Exactly. So people will be like, I know her from Triple J. Maybe we'll go see her. The bad thing about that is, like, she'll think, oh, it's a Triple J presenter playing a set. Like, yeah. no, she's the don. She's the goat. <laughs> Andy Garvey is the goat. Like, if yeah. you are my mum, she's, like, the, the wise grandmother for Literally. Me. Yeah, literally. She's, like, the prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> the wise prime minister, <laughs> the one that everyone loves. The She's like new- Jacinda Ardern. Yeah. That's- yeah. <laughs> Andy Garvey. <laughs> Andy Garvey is the Jacinda Ardern. When I email her, being like, "Hey, want to come on? We spoke about you." <laughs> She's gonna be like, "What the <laughs> fuck <laughs> are you talking about? I'm not coming on to that shit." <laughs> nah, should be fun. Yeah, Splendor have like got it really right in the past. So like Jensen Interceptor last year was yeah. like my highlight. He is amazing. We had Splendor last year. Yeah, we we performed last year oh, for the DJs. I sleep. Yeah, it was good. We were like, we went for the all my friends. They curated a Smirnoff stage and we mm-hmm. played there, and it was really cool. And like even the year before, I, oh no, I think it was two years before. I saw Nancy Wang, of the Juan McLean and LCD sound system. I shit you not, I counted there was thirty people at her set. Shit. She was spinning all vinyl, in this tiny little tent, and there was thirty people there. I was like. She's probably, arguably, one of the most talented artists in the world. I love that, though. And like, there's 30 people there. Like, hopefully her fee's good. Yeah, oh, I love definitely. that shit. Oh, yeah. Because was... she gets the fee, she gets out. And if there's 30 people there, it'd be the most magical experience. Yeah, exactly. It was. It was. Because I was like, I can't believe there's only 30 people here. But also, she was having the time of her life. And Lost Paradise as well do awesome things. Finally tuned to good. Totally. People. Finally tuned to killing it. Um, like, shout out Sebastian. I had... And the team there. I don't know them, but shout out to Sebastian. <laughs> Hop on, come, let's talk. I need to guess I'm running out of friends. <laughs> um, no, I had heat stroke. Oh, no. For not finally tunes issue. Yep. The festival's issue. Yeah. Oh. You just went too hard. Hor- no. It was just too Dead hard. Dead sober. Oh, what? There, all right, we're going to do this now. The yep. water. Yeah. So in the, there was no water in the camping area for us. Yeah. They turned one of the taps off because that was the campgrounds thing and not the festivals yeah so I turned one of the taps off and I was 200 metres away from water at all times 
Yeah. Right. Yep. So when we're packing stuff in 40 degree heat, I'm not going to feel well. So I got heat stroke on the first day. I laid, I was sitting on the floor at the back watching Peggy Yu <laughs> and it was the best <laughs> night of my life. Like dead so toe, like just dying. I was vomiting all night. Oh fuck! But watching Peggy, Peggy Goo was like my life. Like revitalizing. That, that lineup was human movement. DJ boring Peggy Goo. I wouldn't have moved all day. Yeah, that's great. Um, they do sick things. They had Kink closing their big dance oh, stage. Like stop it. the Don. They sick. I hope that they do the same things again this year. I like really wanted to go to Lost Paradise last year, but we had a few purple sneakers gigs, so I couldn't go. But it's on my list. It's a cool little festival. Yeah. Um, I, I've heard nothing but good things about Lost. We'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like and this. just like, it's one of those festivals that's high risk. Lost Paradise. Get mm, the fuck out of here, bro. How the fuck is Laneway a high risk festival? Have it, has she ever been to Laneway? <laughs> Laneway is the most, like, no one does <sighs> drugs at Laneway. Oh, no, people do drugs at Laneway. But not... not <laughs> but not like... You not go to Lost not, Paradise and you go to Laneway and it's like a whole Completely other world. different, yeah. yeah. it's a whole other world. Like, kids don't do MDMA at Laneway. Oh, no way. And that's what's killing people. Yeah. Or not MDMA. I just... Fake shit. I feel like Laneway is like an older crowd as exactly. well. It's interesting that that got deemed high risk. I think it's just um, number of people is a big thing. Yeah. And also, they're booking less dance acts every year as well, so it's like... That's what I, th- I yeah. saw that. But then they just booked, like... They found their niche, and I think they're. That's. Like, I'll go again this year, regardless of the lineup, just yeah. because of how killer that festival. You know is. what? I think I think it's a shame though. Like I went this year, and I must admit there were a lot less dance acts than. That's that's something that I love, obviously. Yeah. But like, you know, in the past they'd booked like Sophie, QT, they'd booked Hudson Mohawk, Rusty, and then I feel like last year it was really lacking. I think. But I don't know if that's just because that's not what the festival looks for. I think as well. Yeah. It's like they operated in the sort of like. R&B like the indie R&B niche yeah, definitely. and that's so big right now yeah. so it's just like oh we may as well just play into that a bit more so yeah, I don't definitely. blame them for that yeah and which is I, a shame because I feel like that's locking out a whole kind of yeah demographic but but then again we're going to go anyway that's the thing yeah oh the They're lineup smart. is always good yeah, yeah. Um, what else local prom- who else is killing it local promoter wise uh, fine Astral okay. Astral People I've oh got to say shout out God. to Astral People they two are some of the world's best that summer dance series was I went once yeah and it was like like who did I CC Disco like yeah playing to the in the Sydney sunset to how many people yeah incredible and it's this I think the last series completely sold out yeah it did Amazing. and it wasn't that expensive yeah it's $40 it's affordable they get some of the world's best yeah. like Brayman Hamo hello yeah. that's huge that wasn't even the headline was it no I think they did headline the one they did were they on the floating points one Oh, maybe they didn't. What? Okay, no. I think it was Floating Points, Raymond Hammer, Lex Deluxe. Okay, that's huge. I think. I don't know. Don't, don't quote me. Something like that. But Raymond Hammer definitely played. Yeah, that's it's cool. ridiculous. Yeah. Finer Things as well. Finer Things, wow. shout out. Heavenly shout out. I saw Luca Lozano a few months ago at 77. Ben had brought him over. Wow. And that was a really good show. Club 77 are taking on a lot of like first shows as well. Definitely. And I think that's... Yeah, I've tried to get booked at 77. Oh, I've tried to do parties at 77, but it hasn't happened. That's <laughs> like, no um, shade. <laughs> uh, who is it? They do a lot of good things. Nerve. Yeah. There's yeah. Nerve people did. Had a show at Sly Fox. Jacques yeah. Renault. Whatever. Oh, is that the one Jacques Renault and Sam Caldwell? Uh, yeah, Sly Fox last weekend. You know what? The first face-to-face interview I ever did was with Jacques Renault. Wow. Random. I was meant to go out, but I crashed. And I was like, no, I'm not doing a yeah. summer ticket. Yeah. Oh, damn. It's okay. It happens. Yeah. I go out all the time. And then, Good Bar doing good things. Good Bar? Who's promoting yeah. it? I don't know. I, I think they must have brought a new promoter on board because I think... It, it's changed so much. It has changed so much. Which is good because I think that venue has a lot of potential and yeah. I don't think it was being used to its no, not best potential. Um, who else is doing really well? There's a lot of great parties happening at the moment. I community say Chest is like... Community Chest. Oh, that's just like... Greatest. It's like a super group of yeah. promoters. Ah, uh, Sid and Pretty as well. Shout yeah. out to Eddie Diamond. I think Tokyo Sing Song are like, I think they're the, like, there's an argument to be had over Harpoon and Harry. Like, I don't want to pitch people against you. It's Harpoon and Harry's versus Freighters versus Tokyo Sing Song right yeah, now. Yeah, definitely. That's for like, for my ticket. It's yeah. like, if I'm going to go out, it's like, they're three every single weekend. Yeah. So shout like, Sing Song's sort of been slapped on, but now it's a bit more. I think it's just because there's the whole, I just think Marley Bar is like an mm, interesting place. You go there on a Saturday <laughs> and it's like every, 
intersection of people in Sydney yeah. at the Mali Bar. Whether that's a good thing or not depends on the night. But Tokyo, like they did an upgrade of the sound system yeah. and they redid the venue in the last year. And but isn't that a good thing as well? Because these people that wouldn't normally witness it are going to pay ten dollars, go downstairs, and Definitely. be like in this weird world of dance music. Like, I yeah. think that's awesome. Yeah, exactly, and that's like that's how people get into the community exactly you know? like you kind of by accident almost yeah exactly more of that exactly more of, more that. of that more of Mood. that <laughs> um it's like my friends call Mali the inner west crow's nest hotel <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like, as if you someone live who on... grew up on the north so you know about Crowley me, yeah like, that resonates so like we finish we'll go to a club yeah. see the headline and I finish like what now yeah what are our options Crowley here <laughs> Crowley <laughs> <laughs> no I oh. The craziness hotel. Oh, no. What else? I'm um, out of ideas. Pardon? Nothing, don't worry. You're out of ideas. What, what else, else is important? What else is important? I think there's a lot of things that are important. <laughs> uh, at the moment, I think the most important thing is the current, just the lockout conversation. Mm. I think for the first time since they've been implemented in 2014. 2014? Yeah, it's 2014. Wow, it's been almost five years. Um, They've, there's a serious conversation happening about actually repealing them but I yeah. think you know it's all well and good for them to be repealed but what what is Sydney post lockout I exactly. think that's the conversation we need to have and we have to think about because we can't because there's a certain risk as well it's like yeah lockouts are gone yeah and then I can see you straight away because of how music is complacency yeah. st- instantly oh like, definitely oh, it's fine. yeah like but the same level of work that's getting put in now yeah has to be mirrored after anyway yeah, definitely. And what can you say to someone that's me that's never experienced Sydney pre-lockout about what Sydney was like before? Because I'm into like yeah. this dream state of like, why are we complaining for? Like, we've still got some events. Like, yeah. what would you say to me to bring me back down to earth? You know what? I only experienced Sydney post uh, pre-lockout for one year and I went to the shittest clubs. Nice. I went to Soho. Yeah, well, that's I what happens to, in your 18. You know, like, I wasn't really into electronic music that much at that point, so I couldn't really give you a... Oh, it was amazing. It was the best place ever. But in saying that, like, there was, I don't know, there was just this feeling of, you know, you'd go out and you could go, like, we'd bar hop, we'd we'd club hop, we'd go to, like, in the cross, we'd go to, like, six different clubs in one night and that was mad. You'd come home with, like, stamps all up your arm and you'd be like, cool, that's mad. I can't. But it's like, it doesn't happen anymore, I can't imagine, like, I can't imagine that. Exactly. And I think that's... It's sad that that's what it came to, that yeah. the culture has been kind of diminished to a point where there's a whole generation of kids that haven't been able to experience that freedom. Yeah. But at the same time, I think it's up to us now to rebuild that. You know, yeah. like, there are, are up-and-coming venues, like uh, one that comes to mind, the news agency in Camperdown, mm-hmm. like, they've just moved to a bigger venue because they were doing really yeah. well there. So I think, you know, I think post-lockout, it's going to be rebuilding venues, putting on more parties, and just going out. Yeah, like uh, showing up. I think yeah. that that's why there's a beauty in my ignorance. Yeah, because like, I don't know what it was like. I don't exactly. care. I don't give a shit, and neither none of my friends care. Yeah, and no one my age gives a shit. It's like, oh, this is what we've got, so we're gonna work with it. There's no point complaining. Exactly, and like it will get better. I think like as much as it's shit now, I think it's like it's hit rock bottom and it's on the up. Exactly. That's so, that's what I think. Yeah, anyway. we've talked about culture a lot, purple yeah. sneakers a lot. Yeah. Where to now for Caitlin Medcalf? Oh, that's a really tough question. Pers- like in my personal I told you life, I, you, babe. I don't know. My boyfriend and I have been floating the the Melbourne conversation. Don't you dare! I know it's. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> okay, tell me. Convince me otherwise. Everyone that goes to Melbourne's like Parry, you'd feel in so well in Melbourne. Yeah. Like I'm not saying this from an ego point of view. Like Parry, you do so well in Melbourne. You're feeling so well. There'd be so much work for you. It's not about that. We yep. need minds in Sydney. Definitely, yeah. So I don't want to go there, fall in love, yeah. and then come back and be like, fuck Sydney. Sydney sucks. Yeah, but I don't want that. So yeah. don't. Yeah. Please. No. no. Well, he wants to move. I'm kind of like, I can't move yet. I need it. Yeah. I still have unfinished work here. But. <laughs> <laughs> unfinished business. Unfinished business. Business. Yeah. I think for me, I just want to take more photos. Uh, just make Purple Sneakers the best that it can be. Yeah. Um, I want to put on more parties because I feel like we have a cultural obligation to give back to the community that we've been part of for so long. Yeah. And giving people the opportunity to showcase their work in a non-judgmental space. That I think is really important. Um, I don't know. I think like as a DJ, I've kind of come to realize there's not a lot of spaces in Sydney where you can just go and do your thing. Mm. So all the parties that I like to put on, I kind of 
tend to keep the brief as loose as possible so that people can kind of have an opportunity to do what they want exactly and like that's how you learn as an artist too you experiment you make mistakes you grow and yeah that's been really important to me making music as well because i'm really impatient and you know i've probably got like 40 songs that i've started yeah. but i have maybe two that are nearly finished but we'll see how do you find time to add an artist project to all that <sighs> it's I'm, I'm not gonna lie i probably work on music like an hour every week or two right. like that's it's really bare minimum but i'd love to do more i just yeah i go through streaks I, I go through bursts of motivation like yeah, i sat exactly. down on sunday and my boyfriend and i were just sitting watching tv and i was like i have three hours where i'm doing nothing and i was like okay challenge me and he's like okay you have 20 minutes to come up with something so we put a timer on and i like sat down and actually came yeah. up with something and i was like oh cool like that's i need awesome. to do that more so parameters I'm just finding out all the things that you're doing while you're not replying to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit. When I'm not replying to people, I'm probably in my room, like, crying in my bed. <laughs> like, don't say that. I'm so overwhelmed. Now I'm just going to send you a message like, I ah, just backspace it all. No, I'll leave it alone. <laughs> no, I do get back to people eventually. No, I'm, it's a joke. Yeah. It's, just, it's a running joke in my head. It's like, oh, I said Caitlin. Yeah. I'll send her 30 messages. Oh, it's so bad. Um, no, you're good. I think that's a yeah. neat little way to see it off. Yeah. Yeah. Can you... Uh, Wait, Caitlin Redcalf, Parry Talks episode two. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. If you're here till now, for episode two, you've fucking done the long way. Woo. Shout out to everyone we've spoken about. Yeah. Who have we spent? What names have we dropped? Oh my god. Okay, Lex Lux, 82E, Lewis. <laughs> Lex is first. <laughs> Lex is first. I feel like we talked about Lex this whole interview. Shout out Lexi Halpin. Uh, Eddie Diamond, Holly O'Neill, uh, Louisa, Sandro. Uh, the Finer Things crew, Finely Tuned crew. Uh, we didn't shout out FBI Radio. Shout, shout out, out FBI to F- Radio. We didn't talk about FBI at all. <laughs> I love FBI. Shout out them though. Shout out FBI. Come on. Shout Come out to the everyone. podcast. Sp- Maddie Carr. Shout Maddie out Maddie Carr. Carr. Who but. should I have on next? Next? I like should... asking this to the people. Or if like, not yeah. next, but like, if I should have one person to hear their story so I can be re-inspired, who should I have on? That is a great question. I think that... I'm gonna have to think about that. I think there's a lot of people you should talk to. Um, if there was one person that I should strive towards. Yeah. Oh, okay. One person that you should strive more grab. <laughs> He's gonna come on and I know it. <laughs> no, we're talking. No, more grab no, or D Tiffany. I, you know, this is like. This is yeah. This is like personal dream, D Tiffany. Yeah. Like she is everything that I aspire to be. Label head, good producer immersed in her community and like amazing yeah awesome yeah we've done it wait do a big clap now just to resync the audio no 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 oh wait <laughs> hang on sick you how fucking long was that <laughs>